So I have here in my hands the Canon T4i with the 18 to 135 STM lens. This is their new lens with the stepper motor technology for silent autofocus while filming. Uh, it also means quick and snappy autofocus uh, for taking pictures too. For comparison, I have the original Canon 18 to 135 lens that does not have the STM technology. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about these lenses in this video, give you some sample shots, give you my thoughts on them. Um, and give you some idea of their value. So both are obviously 18 to 135 in focal length. They have a variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6 and that means as you zoom when you're at 18 millimeters your widest aperture available to you is 3.5 but as you zoom that widest aperture decreases meaning the number goes up because of course they're fractions and when you hit about 70 you're shooting at 5.6 and from 70 on up to 135 you are constant at 5.6. Both of these lenses are EF-S which means they only work on crop sensor cameras like the Rebels or the XXD, 50D, 60D series and things of that sort. They're about the same size and weight uh, same length is what I mean about size too. The new version is a tiny bit heavier, a tiny bit shorter, um, not really even worth mentioning, but that brings me to discuss build quality a little bit. The old version has a little bit of wiggle to it, um, and the new version doesn't have that at all. It feels very solid. The new version also is capable of focusing uh, down to 1.3 is its minimum focus distance, 1.3 feet. The old version at 1.5. Not a huge difference, but a difference worth noting. In general, I was, with both of them, I was pleased with how close I could get. I wouldn't really call it a macro lens, but you can get quite close and get some really nice uh, detail shots. Let's talk a little bit about image quality. The MTF, the MTF charts from Canon led us to believe that the uh, new version would be a good bit sharper, especially at the longer focal lengths, and my testing supports that. Let's before we get to the longer, let's talk about the at the wider. You know, 18 to 24 range, just a tiny bit of increased sharpness with the STM version. Around 50, you know, 24, 50 in that general range, very little difference. Uh, basically, not even worth mentioning. But up above, it's raining now, so I wonder if you can hear that. But up above 85, you really start to see some differences in quality between the two. And of course, this was shooting at the maximum aperture for the focal length I was testing. So really kind of pushing these lenses. This is their weak areas. Uh, and the difference is, is quite notable, as I said. The other big difference I saw was the amount of chromatic aberration. So the original lens really has a lot of that purple magenta fringing along high contrast areas. Sometimes it would give my blacks in the, in the samples uh, a little tint of purple. The STM controls that much, much better, and you see that far less. Focus speed and accuracy of the STM one is, of course, improved over the original. I never saw this lens hunt for focus in any of my tests while I was on the T4i, and occasionally I did see that um, with the original version. And I have a separate video up that talks about focus during video. There's really no contest here. The STM version truly is silent uh, to the onboard mic on the T4i. It's even quieter than the 40 STM. And I think that's because simply there's a little bit more to um, dampen the noise. It's really coming down the rain. So, and compared to the original STM, this sucker grinds and stutters like nobody's business. It's important to note that the STM version uh, is not full-time manual focus. There's some information floating around on the web out there. It is not. I thought it was too for a while. The focus ring moves so nicely and smoothly when it's in autofocus mode, but it will not change the focus of the camera. I've talked to Canon and confirmed that for manual focus to work, you must flip the switch to manual focus. That's different than some of the higher-end lenses and some of the primes that Canon offers as well have full-time manual focus. Quick mention about the IS, they use the same system uh, and that system is fine. I, again, I was happy with how it worked. I took a few shots at 135 millimeters at one-fifth of a second that I judged to be sharp enough for prints. Uh, without IS, you really should be shooting, at that focal rank, you should be shooting at 125th of a second and higher. 
one one hundred and twenty fifth of a second and higher. So um, that's a pretty significant difference, and the IS helps. That's, and the IS helps during video as well, which leads me to talk a little bit about video. So the purpose of the STM technology, we kind of touched on that a little bit, is designed to silently autofocus during video. Um, and be more adept at making these kind of small, minute changes that are needed to keep a subject that is moving in focus, to keep tracking a subject. But the issue is that the brains of the T4i that control autofocus during the video just are a little on the slow side. I have some other sample videos up uh, that show this. If your subject is moving quickly, it just can't keep them in focus. It does a pretty good job of trying, but it's just not there yet. That's not a lens issue. That's the brains of the camera issue. It's just not quite at the camcorder level. So, final thoughts. The new version is certainly improved. And although you make some sacrifices when you buy any lens with this much range at this kind of price level, um, those sacrifices are definitely fewer than they were with the original STM. So this, this is a quite a nice lens. And bundled with the T4i, it makes a very nice package. Currently, the only way you can get the STM lens is to buy it directly off Canon's website. They're selling it for $550, plus you have to pay tax, um, and that's not a great value. If you pick it up with the T4i, the cost works to, out to be about $350, and I do consider that to be a good value for this lens. Uh, as I said, it really complements the um, T4i nicely. If you have an earlier Rebel, you do still get all of the benefits of the STM lens, except for that continuous autofocus feature. That is a feature of the camera, not the lens. But the quick and snappy autofocus um, still works nice, and of course the better chromatic aberration handling, um, and just the general quality. That's all going to be visible on a T3i or earlier. Just for your information, the original sells for 330 on Amazon. I'm going to have links for all of this below and links to my website where I have more samples for you to look at that compare these two lenses um, and a lot more information. Final word. This lens is targeted at those who want the convenience of one lens without switching lenses frequently. Um, and it does a decent job for photos and videos. And I don't think anyone in that targeted audience will be disappointed. But if you fall outside that, targeted audience. If you are somebody who's serious about video work and could call yourself a videographer or hopes to be called a videographer soon, I think you're going to want something else, um, something probably with a fixed aperture. And email me, leave a comment below, and we can chat about some other options for you. But if you're looking for that one lens that will kind of do it all, uh, this does an admirable job. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, I have more videos coming this within a week. I should have a video up of the Sony a65, which is a very nice competitor to the T4i. So we're going to see how those two um, stack up against each other. I think it's going to do a better job of the autofocus during filming than the T4i does. So if you're really looking for that, stay tuned. Take a moment to like my Facebook page. I am going to be giving away an iFi card soon and my favorite budget tripod. Usually the words budget and tripod don't go too well together in a sentence, but this is an exception. So thanks for watching.